We're in Calabria, in the far south of Italy. Welcome to San Luca, a village of 4,000 inhabitants that appears to be very poor. And yet it's the center of the Ndrangheta, the richest and most powerful mafia in the world. Its tentacles have been spreading through these little cobbled streets for almost 200 years now. It has been here ever since. Strangely, though, the old inhabitants of the village have never even heard of the Andrangheta. Il paese è, è anche famoso per l'Andrangheta, vero? Andrangheta. No, non esiste. No, non esiste la gente per bene. Tutti su tutti per bene. Lei è d'accordo? Eh? Io sono d'accordo con lui. Cioè, sono d'accordo con lui. Noi non possiamo rubare perché questi soldi non ci sono. Non c'è lavoro, non c'è niente. Non c'è niente. In fact, the Calabrian Andrangheta pulls in 53 billion euros a year. But it keeps a very low profile. A code of silence rules here. Every Sunday morning, whilst the men chat in the town square, the women of this very religious region go to mass dressed in black. Perché diventino per noi il corpo e il sangue di Gesù Cristo nostro Signore. In this small village, most people have a family member in the Mafia, even the priest, Pino Strangio. He's the only person who agreed to talk to us about the Andrangheta. While he chose the priesthood, three of his cousins are in prison. Dei cugini che hanno, hanno scelto la loro vita. Il cugino, adesso sono grandi, sono sui 30 e passa anni. Sono, possiamo dire che già qualcuno è più da 10 anni che è dentro per motivi di droga. It's rare for a Calabrian like Pino Strangio to admit openly to their family's crimes. But there's no shortage of stories like his. The Ndrangheta is everywhere. Calabria is the toe of Italy, just across from Sicily. It's also the birthplace of the Ndrangheta. Nearly 200 clans divide up the region, and their annual earnings are 53 billion euros, which is as much as McDonald's and IKEA combined. The Ndrangheta is powerful and exists in every corner of the world. Its primary source of income is drugs. They're the world leaders in the cocaine market. Se qui il porto di Gioia d'Auro e l'ingresso della cocaina in Europa, l'Andrangheta controlla tutto qui. The Guardia di Finanza regularly makes spectacular drug seizures. Di questo sostanzialmente potremmo acquistare anche una casa nel, nella posta Parigi, certo. Each Andrangheta family lines its pockets by demanding pizzo, mafia protection money. One man filmed the extortions he was subject to. Sono 10 milioni di lire all'epoca erano e la metto sul tavolo, la faccio vedere anche. And those who refuse to pay are killed. Fino alla morte, che speriamo sia, sia una morte naturale. Those who speak out are living on borrowed time. Una blondatura a prova di Kalashnikov per evitare che propriamente magari uno sorseggi un caffè. Most of the Andrangheta's victims come from within its own ranks. The Calabrian Mafia is heavily armed and more than ready to use firearms to settle its scores. The worst enemy of the Andrangheta is the anti-mafia prosecutor, Nicola Greteri. He's under 24-hour protection. He has headed long inquiries that have brought down dozens of mafia bosses. He has also broken the Andrangheta's codes. If it's necessary, you should kill your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, all your family. But he has difficulty getting witnesses. This mafia has no overall leader. It's a collection of families and there are no informants. New members swear never to betray the family. 
The Italian police managed to film an induction which we can see in this very rare footage. We'll be investigating this shadowy and ultra-Catholic countryside mafia, its hidden fortune and its control over this part of the world. It is 5 a.m. In this southern Italian port, law enforcement officers are at the ready. This is Gioia Tauro, 50 kilometers from Reggio in western Calabria. In his impeccable uniform with his well-knotted tie, Alessandro Barbera, a colonel in the Guardia di Finanza, is leading this large-scale anti-drug operation. He has had a tip-off. An inbound ship is carrying a large quantity of cocaine. Ecco, questa è la nave che attualmente uh, sta trasportando questi container provenienti dal Sud America. This ship is the target. The Indrangheta has set up members of its mafia families in Colombia, Ecuador and Mexico to buy the drugs produced there and send them to the USA, Europe, Australia. The narcotics are sent all over the world, wherever the Indrangheta has a presence. Half the drugs the mafia sell in Europe come through the port of Gioia Tauro in Calabria. For each raid, Colonel Barbera has about 30 men watching over the unloading. He and his men watch the dock workers closely. According to a recent official report into the Mafia, many of them are members of the Andrangheta. Se qui il porto di Gioia Tauro e l'ingresso della cocaina in Europa, l'Andrangheta controlla tutto qui. It's a war of attrition between Colonel Barbera and the Andrangheta. For years now, any suspect ship has been escorted by custom service boats to make sure the drugs aren't thrown overboard and picked up by speedboats before the ship arrives in port. C'è una sorta di eh, battaglia quotidiana tra noi e l'andrangheta e le organizzazioni criminali a, a, a cercare di farla franca da parte loro e cercare noi invece di prenderli. Nel momento in cui andiamo a mutuare, andiamo a consolidare un particolare tipo di controllo, subito le organizzazioni criminali trovano un nuovo, una nuova modalità di occultamento. And in this cat and mouse game, the Calabria mafia is always one step ahead. Quanti container sono scesi fino adesso? Comandante, da stamattina che hanno iniziato le operazioni alle 7 del mattino, sono scesi per adesso all'incirca 340 container. Ah, ho capito. Over a thousand containers to check. It's a colossal task. But the tip-off the colonel received is very precise, and 54 of them are soon identified. They're carrying bananas. Hundreds of boxes are emptied from each container and inspected. Finally, the men of the Guardia turn their attention to one container in particular. The colonel doesn't want to reveal the details of what put them on the scent while the investigation is still going. But it's clear that this container has a false bottom. He has it stripped. Police officers film it. In a few minutes, the container is taken apart. In the bottom, lead sheets are covering something. 
the lead can fool the custom scanning machines. The false bottom is stuffed full of drugs. Benissimo, allora quanti sono? Li stai iniziando a contare? Sì, colonnello, però ne abbiamo già 50 kg circa, perché ogni panetto è un tiro e ancora dobbiamo arrivare fino in fondo al fondo. Ah, benissimo, benissimo. 50 kg di drugs è already un enorme hall. Ma il false bottom del container holds much more. È un historic catch. Questo contenitore è stato creato appositamente per formare un doppio fondo, come vedete questo è un contenitore eh, lunghissimo, questo doppio fondo è stato creato appositamente per occultare, per occultare la cocaina. This is new to the colonel. The cocaine business is so lucrative for the Andrangata that the mafia is spending a fortune bribing numerous people in the transport chain, right up to the makers of the containers. There are dozens of bricks. So many, it takes several people to carry them out. Tutto questo in una macchina basta. The bricks of drugs are taken to the Guardia di Finanza's compound on the port of Gioia Tauro. The bricks are numbered and each one is weighed. A2, 185. In total, 101 bricks of cocaine. A7, 195. C'è un panetto che eh, pesa all'incirca un chilo, un chilogrammo, un chilogrammo e due. Mediamente nel consumo al dettaglio, quindi nel minuto spaccio, ogni chilo di cocaina purissima viene almeno tagliata quattro volte, quindi da ogni chilo ne diventano poi sostanzialmente quattro. Eh, il mercato minuto eh, tendenzialmente porta a vendere ogni grammo a circa 60 euro, quindi facendo subito un conto ogni panetto di un chilo di cocaina purissima porta nelle casse delle organizzazioni criminali circa 250 mila euro. Quindi con un panetto di questo sostanzialmente potremmo acquistare anche una casa nel, nella vostra Parigi, certo. C291205, C31185, l'ultimo? Sì, allora fa il totale, allora. vediamo quant'è. 118,570. 118 kilos of cocaine can be bought from the producer for 236,000 euros, according to UN experts, and sold for more than 28 million euros. It's one of the Italian authorities' biggest drug seizures of the year. And a gigantic loss for the Indrangheta. Now they need to verify that it is indeed cocaine, using chemical testing. The liquid turns dark blue, a sign of very pure cocaine. A new investigation is started to identify the cartel that sent the cocaine. The starting point is this logo. Eccolo qua. Qui abbiamo questo simbolo con due lettere T E. Investigations into the Andrangheta are headed by an anti-mafia prosecutor. He's one of Italy's most threatened men. He has an armored car, an armed escort, and three bodyguards with him constantly. He has lived like this for 26 years. Hello. Nicholas Griteri has sent over 1,000 mafiosos to prison. His mission has its roots here, in this Calabrian country school, where the children of the Indrangheta members this made the rules. This is the second, the first piano, this is the... And there I felt, I felt this violence.
partiva da qui fin lì sopra. Si scontrava con l'educazione che, che io ho ricevuto in famiglia. Nicholas Guterri ha dedicato la sua vita a fighting in Drangheta, a long way from the path taken by his classmates. Alcuni professionisti, molti altri sono stati uccisi, molti altri sono in carcere in questo momento. Alcuni li, li ho arrestati io. Quanti? Almeno una decina. Una decina. E quanti, erano quanti sono morti? E morti almeno 6-7. Nicola Guterri ha so many death threats because he's not content with just putting criminals in prison. He has also managed to figure out how the Indrangheta works and has discovered the rituals that govern entry into this secret society. Compie un tirocinio che dura un anno e mezzo o due. E nel corso di questo tirocinio eh, questa persona deve compiere degli atti arditi, degli atti di coraggio, dimostrare di essere capace, dimostrare di non essere un mollaccione. How do you join the Indrangheta? The word comes from the Greek and means courage or fervor. Recently, using hidden cameras, Nicola Grateri's men managed to film an induction. Repeat after me. I swear to renounce, up to the seventh generation, any criminal society previously recognized by me to preserve the honor of my wise brothers. The new member becomes part of a family for life. If he ever betrays it, he'll either be judged by his peers or commit suicide. The vow of poison. A capsule. It's a capsule. Cyanide to poison yourself. Or you take a gun. Always keep a bullet loaded. That one's for you. Da questo momento esiste solo Andrangheta e se necessario dovrai uccidere tuo padre, tua madre, tuo fratello, tua sorella, tutta la tua famiglia pur di preservare l'esistenza stessa dell'Andrangheta. Questo è fondamentale, è un giuramento fortissimo. In exchange for his services, the Andrangheta gives the new member the protection of the clan and a comfortable income, as long as he respects the rules. Nicola Grateri knows the punishments meted out to those who don't. There are plenty of examples. Cioè, a seconda di cosa si commette, si è classificati e può essere tipo la sanzione può essere essere sospesi dal, dal partecipare alle riunioni per tre mesi, quattro mesi, eh, essere eh, mettere la testa nel vater e tirare lo sciacquone, imbrattare la testa di sterco di animali, eh, fargli la pipì sulla gamba. Sono atti di umiliazione che vengono fatti, oppure anche la morte. The judge has even worked out the secret codes used by certain clans in their confidential communications. Questo è uno dei 30 codici conosciuti sinora, scritti da andranghetisti. This information has been built up over nearly 30 years of investigations and raids. This is the latest seizure from a few months ago. These symbols represent the hierarchical structure of one of the clans of San Luca, the stronghold of the Calabrian Mafia. It took years of work for Judge Grateri to learn everything about the Mafia. His investigations can last for years. His dragnet operations are often spectacular. It is 2 a.m at the Criminal Investigation Division of Reggio di Calabria. 200 police officers are mobilized by the judge for a very large anti-mafia operation. Tonight, 29 people suspected of being mafia bosses are going to be arrested for rigging procurement contracts and widespread extortion. A few minutes before leaving, envelopes are distributed to each team with information about the targets. Until now, only a handful of officers knew who the judge was targeting to avoid any leaks by corrupt agents. Il bersaglio è prettamente della della squadra che opera e è segreto fino all'ultimo momento. Inspector D'Agostino is in charge of arresting a godfather who is the main target of the operation, Salvatore Aquino. Aquino is an important figure in the Andrangheta. 
He's the 70-year-old head of a powerful clan that rules over the Gioiosa Ionica, the municipality next to Siderno. He was already sentenced to 15 years in prison in 1999 for international cocaine trafficking. He's now on probation. It's a family business. His nephews are currently in prison. They were arrested three years ago while on the run. Here they are on the day of their arrest, filmed by the Carabinieri. They were found in these two hiding places, perfectly concealed in the basement of a house, one under a movable staircase. The other in this false ceiling. To escape the police, mafiosi often use this kind of bunker. They can spend months or even years living in one. On the other side of the car park, Matteo and his men also find out the identity of the man there to arrest, Leonardo Capogreco, 38 years old, who belongs to the Comiso family of Siderno. He's suspected of corruption and extortion. It's alleged that he's the clan accountant. Sì, sono personaggi importanti dell'Andrangheta. Dell'Andrangheta Calabrese. The officers will strike simultaneously to avoid any information getting out and any suspects slipping through the net. Just before setting off, it's time for final instructions. Tu sarai con lui. Per entriamo da quando gli chiediamo il documento, quando va a pisciare, quando va a cambiarsi, quando si fa la borsa, tu sarai con lui. Essendo che comunque noi stiamo agendo in una zona della Calabria dove questa, questa cosca che andiamo a colpire ha già un passato, un pregresso, sono stati coinvolti in molte indagini. The officers have neither bulletproof vests nor heavy weapons. Mafiosi don't put up any resistance. They leave it to their army of lawyers to get them out of prison, with no fuss. Over 60 police cars leave the car park in convoy. 200 men of the criminal investigation division sweep across Calabria. An hour later, the vehicles break up and head to the three target towns. Leonardo Capogreco lives in this large villa. Although the officers have been discreet, they come to the attention of the neighbor's dog. They need to get into the garden quickly by climbing over the fence. This officer is responsible for watching the back of the house. La casa, gli angoli. Capito? At the front of the house, three men are in the front line. A fourth stays back, watching for any movement at the windows. Sì, un documento l'avete? Eh, Siamo della polizia. Eh, Prego. no, lo vedo. Devo fare una perquisizione. Prego. Il documento ci dovete dare, però siete solo in casa? Eh? Siete solo in casa? Sì. Leonardo Capogreco doesn't seem troubled, despite this nighttime intrusion. Inside the house, everything seems quiet, but the police officers remain cautious. Avete armi in casa? No, no, no. Non siete permessi? Ma non siete permessante? No, 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 non le tengo se non è The investigators search the house. Officially, this man works in construction, but he's suspected of laundering money for the Andrangheta. No doubt he doesn't keep money hidden at home. The investigators are really looking for accounts documents that might prove the money laundering. Abbiamo trovato qualche cosa che al momento ci riteniamo ci possa servire, ci possa tornare utile, però siccome per a volte per controllare bene ci vuole più tempo, 
quindi in ufficio avremo modo di guardare con maggiore attenzione e calma questo materiale che al momento stiamo portando con noi. Capo Greco is taken away to the police headquarters. At the same time, five kilometers away, the men of the criminal investigation division are taking stock of the situation with the uniformed officers who have been staking out these premises. They're going to arrest the man considered to be the godfather of the clan, the 70-year-old Salvatore Aquino. <laughs> Un palo così. È un bel palo, un palo e poi, e poi c'ha anche delle luci bianche che danno sul piazzale, quindi comunque è abbastanza illuminato. La strada invece è buia fuori. La strada? Fuori. Andiamo, pure noi. They head off to the Godfather's home. Once there, surprisingly, they find that this mafioso who's allegedly sitting on an illegal fortune of tens of millions of euros doesn't live in a fancy mansion. He has chosen instead to build an apartment block to house his whole family. He lives in a modest third floor apartment. In this region, the mafia heads keep things low key, at least on the surface. Perquisizione. Sì, sì, c'è tutto. Tutto. Anzi, se vi cominciate a vestire pure. Vestire pure? Uh -huh. Vabbè, lasciate aperto il documento. Intanto cominciate a vestirvi sì. e a farvi preparare una valigia. The arrested man appears to be a quiet grandfather, a long way from the image of a mafioso in a pinstripe suit with a fat cigar. There are no firearms or bodyguards at his home. The police spend two hours looking for documents to prove that he rigs the market for procurement contracts. Poi leggiamo in, in ufficio. Direzione slettuale antemafia. It's 7 a.m. back in Reggio di Calabria. The 29 arrested men have been brought to the police headquarters, in front of which the friends and family of the suspects have gathered. They'll be taken into custody, but first the police parade the suspects in front of the cameras, in order of importance. It's a scene with a PR message for the whole of Calabrian society. Salvatore Aquino, the alleged godfather, is the first to be shown off to the Italian media. Leonardo Capogreco comes out in fourth place. They're all accused of aggravated extortion and the rigging of procurement contracts, but above all, with mafia association. A crime that only exists in Italy. It allows someone to be convicted as soon as a link is established between him and a criminal organization. The maximum penalty is 15 years in prison. Judge Criteri has invited around 30 journalists to his press conference. Things are not dealt with in the same way as they are in the rest of Europe. They go through all the details of the night's operation, the identities of the arrested men and the offences they are charged with are all given to the journalists. It's a historic moment for the prosecutor. The members of the Indrangheta arrested tonight are leading members of the Calabrian Mafia. Each big arrest like this gives the judge the chance to appeal directly to public opinion. Faced with the world's most powerful mafia, Nicola Grateri wants to get the message across that the Italian state is in control of Calabria. Perché facciamo la conferenza stampa? Per dire, signori, guardate, noi siamo in grado di fare questo. Dovete avere fiducia in noi. Dovete andare presso la polizia, i carabinieri, la guardia di finanza e denunciare. 
most of the people arrested that night are still in prison. However, Salvatore Aquino, the alleged boss, was released a month later. As usual, his lawyers found a loophole, the necessary procedural irregularity. Fifty kilometers away from Reggio, in the town of Palmi, there's a man who lives constantly in fear. We're going to meet him in this strange building. With 38 surveillance cameras, barbed wire on the compound walls, and elite armed police officers in the courtyard. This is the home of Gaetano Safiotti. His home has become his prison. Gaetano has a wife and a child, but we won't film them. He doesn't want to put them in danger because there's a price on his head. Il caffè lei lo prende sempre a casa? Sì, certo. Il bar mai? No, non è possibile andare al bar. <coughs> Nella nostra condizione è un po' complicato. Che non, a parte il fatto che non molti bar accettano la tua presenza per timori che succeda un attentato e poi metteresti in imbarazzo un po' la gente. Quindi dovremmo prima bonificare il bar e diventa un po' troppo complicato. Gaetano runs a company that makes concrete. He's under threat of death from the Indrangheta because they consider him to be shamed for having broken the Omerta, the code of silence. To survive, he has had to transform his house into a bunker. E questo vetro una blondatura a prova di Kalashnikov per evitare che proprio mentre magari uno sorseggia un caffè senza rischiare senza rischiare che ci possa essere un attentato. Da quanti anni vive dietro questo? Sono 12 anni, 9 mesi e 23 giorni oggi. Però sono 12 anni, 9 mesi e 23 giorni che mi sento un uomo libero. Anche se può sembrare paradossale, prima era un inferno. The authorities have suggested other countermeasures to prevent any kind of attack. Questo, questo lato che dà direttamente sulla strada, abbiamo dovuto alzare questa parete di cemento e poi fortificarla con una parete in ferro. Anche questa eh, contro le possibili, eh, possibili atti intimidatori tipo proiettili, eccetera, e anche dall'alto, come vede, è coperto per evitare che qualcuno ci butti una bomba, insomma, qualcosa. It all started in the early 2000s. For 20 years, Gaetano had been paying the pizzo, the mafia protection money. Sì, veniva, si sedeva qua. Anzi, prima ti chiamava, dice prepara i soldi che vengo alle 3, alle 4, alle 7, ci cioè, dava l'appuntamento e tu dovevi preparare i soldi i contanti. E, e si pagava il, il contante così. In contante, sì, certo, per non lasciare le tracce. Uh, si sedevano. Di conseguenza io avevo già preparato i soldi e li prendevo e li davo totale. By 2001, the Indrangheta had already extorted 2 million euros from him. Time and again, Gaetano had tried not paying them, but each time the Mafia families punished his attempts to rebel. This is the camion that was burned. When I was working on the not pay them, they were doing some retorsions. E mettendo fuoco ai camion o agli escavatori, insomma. In all, they destroyed over 30 construction site vehicles. One of his employees was forced to set fire to his machine himself, while a mafia heavy held a gun to his head. As time went by, the sums demanded of him increased. When he couldn't take any more, Gaetano finally decided to act. C'è una telecamera e inserita in quella apparecchiatura che serviva per registrare tutti gli incontri che io facevo ero obbligato a fare con, con gli uomini dell'Andrangheta. For months he recorded images of the extortions. As well as paying the pizzo to the Palmi family where he works, he also had to give money to the Rosarno and Gioia Tauro clans. 
who controlled the neighboring towns that he passed through to deliver materials to his clients. That's where the Indrangheta differs from other mafias, where there's one head of the whole organization. In Calabria, the region is divided into over 160 areas, each of which has its own boss. That means there's a pizza to pay to each area he passed through. Gaetano was a victim of extortion by three different clans. Three volte per lo stesso lavoro a tre clan diversi. Così funziona. Perché l'andangata ha i suoi feudi, ha i suoi territori. Cioè è come se tu andassi in un paese straniero e dovessi pagare la dogana. Solo perché la attraversi. Gaetano built up several hours of recordings, dozens of examples of his daily nightmare from all times of day. Apri il cassetto, prendo la mazzetta di 10 milioni di lire all'epoca erano e la metto sul tavolo, faccio vedere anche la telecamera nel momento che loro erano distratti. 10 million lira, over 7,000 euros. To make sure he could convince the police, Gaetano made a careful plan and took a lot of risks. Here, he clearly shows to the camera the wad of money he's holding in his hand, proof of the extortion. But one day, a mafioso noticed that something had changed in his office. Lui si accorge anche della telecamera e mi dice sono cazzi tuoi, che cosa vuoi fare con quella telecamera? The man gives Gaetano a warning, but he stays because he's convinced that Gaetano is too frightened to do anything, that the omerta, as always, will keep him quiet. But Gaetano decided he would break the code of silence. He took his recordings to the police. 48 members of three families were arrested and received sentences of up to 16 years in prison. The police also seized property worth 50 million euros. With the arrests, Gaetano was put under pressure to retract his accusations and started receiving death threats. Quanto prima sul tuo corpo ti arriveranno 45 coccia di pallottoni, così te ne andrai non di palme ma di sulla terra. Una minaccia chiara. Una minaccia chiara, quasi morte. un coccio di pallettone per ogni persona arrestata. The Indrangheta, which has had its tentacles everywhere, put pressure on his clients and his suppliers. Gaetano's business lost 90% of its turnover. Subito dopo le denunce c'è stata innanzitutto l'apocalisse che sono qui sono spariti tutti, operai, le banche, i fornitori, i clienti, c'era stato un deserto. Oh, salutatemi. Tutto così. Non poco di più di Gaetano has become shamed as they call it in Calabria. Nevertheless, 13 years later, he feels free. Questa è la mia vita che è ridotta a 20 passi, dalla distanza che c'è dalla mia casa all'ufficio. Dopo per prendere il caffè è l'unico tratto che faccio senza uscire da, da un immobile all'altro. La vita che fa chi sceglie di stare dalla parte della legalità. È il prezzo da pagare, però sono contento di pagare questo prezzo. Thanks to all this protection, Gaetano is still alive, but he's confined to his home. His is an isolated case in Calabria, because those who stand up to the mafia there usually pay with their lives. In Siderno alone, there are 32 recent unsolved murders. The Andrangheta is believed to be behind them all, but no one will come forward. Mario has been going to the cemetery four days a week for 10 years now, still mourning his son, who was shot in the head. Vede che manca il marmo. Non l'ho voluto mettere io. Perché era se, se fosse finita mettendo un marmo e chiudendolo nella tomba. Invece così rimane una cosa ancora aperta. Anche principalmente come simbolo di una vita rubata. Mario has devoted his life to his son's memory, so that justice can be done. Gianluca was killed for defending his father-in-law, who was a victim of extortion. 
In tutte le nostre macchine c'è la foto di lui. Unlike many families in Siderno, Mario decided not to draw a veil over Gianluca's death. To get the murderer convicted, Mario filed a civil lawsuit, which is very rare in this region. Now, the murderer may be released because of procedural irregularity. To get him to pull out of the appeal, the Indrangheta is putting pressure on him again. I sono stato minacciato varie volte, per cui è bene che io possa controllare e registrare tutto quello che avviene intorno a casa mia. The clan that killed his son have become increasingly intimidating since the start of the legal proceedings, nearly 10 years ago. Ecco, vede? Che cosa è? Questi sono dei buchi di proietti. Chi ha sparato? Ah, chi ha sparato? Non lo sappiamo chi ha sparato. Ah. The latest threat was a few months ago. Questa minaccia c'era, abbiamo trovato una tanica di benzina qua davanti alla porta. È un atto intimidatorio. Come per dire stai zitto, falla finita. Era dopo il processo, durante il processo? Durante il processo. Sì, segno chiaro. In spite of the risks, Mario is doing everything he can to keep his son's murderer behind bars. Non ha mai avuto l'idea di fermarsi di rispondere all'intimidazione di fermarmi no assolutamente no perché mi dovrei fermare mai ha avuto in testa no mai non mi fermerò la lotta fino alla fine fino alla fine fino alla morte che speriamo sia, di mo sia una morte naturale Through extortion and drug trafficking, the Indrangheta rakes in billions in cash every year. They launder that money through sophisticated financial arrangements, set up in tax havens. Only a small part of it is invested in Calabria, in property. In Brancaleone, Salvatore Aquino is suspected of being associated with another godfather. Together, they laundered 200 million euros by investing their dirty money in this property development aimed at British people looking for some sunshine. Six years ago, Marie decided to move from England to southern Italy. This is the swimming pool on Emerald. Gioiello del mare. Benvenuti nel vostro sogno. Gioiello del mare. In English, jewel of the sea. A charming complex of 400 apartments and several villas with sea views and four swimming pools. That's how the promotional DVD sold the dream to clients like Marie. And let's not forget the shopping center at the foot of the apartment block, the tennis courts, and the splendid golf course. It's not how things have turned out today. In 2012, the police stopped all the building work. That was when Marie discovered that this property development was in fact a large money laundering operation for the Indrangheta. The finance police have come and sealed the doors. They've seized all the unsold, uncompleted properties. Since then, Marie has lived here alone. She is completely trapped. She doesn't have her flat in London anymore, but she can't sell this one in Brancaleone while the investigation is still ongoing. It is difficult because we don't know what's going to happen. And this is all your savings? This is my life my life savings put uh, into an, a lovely apartment here. And it's a building site, as you can see. The inquiries have been going on for five years now. The case involves five corrupt local officials and a front man who is believed to have set up this very shady property deal on behalf of the Andrangheta Godfathers. We caught up with the man five kilometers from the complex. He runs this little car dealership, far removed from prestige properties. This is the man with the blue sweater. 
He's known to the Italian authorities and is currently under house arrest. He has served a prison term for international heroin trafficking and is considered to be an influential member of the Indrangheta. We filmed him with a hidden camera. He claims that everything about the property development is legal and that the money came from bank loans, not from the Mafia. The man claims there's a conspiracy aimed at putting him back behind bars. So the car dealer is apparently just an honest businessman. Nevertheless, he faces 15 years in prison for his alleged involvement in money laundering. Until the trial is over, these apartments will remain sealed. Every year, the Italian authorities confiscate dozens of buildings built by the Mafia. Whether it's the clans that control the villages of the Aspromonte, or the families that control whole neighborhoods of Reggio di Calabria, the capital of the region. Croce Valanidi is a poor suburb of the town, a rundown area where houses stand next to buildings that are unfinished but already lived in. The mafiosi here don't hide their wealth. The local godfather has even had his comfortable house built on the top of the hill. But he was convicted of murder before he ever had the chance to live in it. It was confiscated and handed over to the observatory of the Ndrangheta, an anti-mafia charity that mainly helps young offenders to get back on the straight and narrow. Vincenzo, the director, now uses the house. This is the view of the terrazzino. Only the best materials were used, like the marble floor and ceiling in this bathroom, for example. This was one of the bagni that was constructed. Con vista sul mare, insomma, giusto per... For the past two months, Vincenzo and his colleagues at the observatory have been accepting young people who have been involved with the law. These young people have dealt drugs or stolen a car. Ragazzi, andiamo. Most of them come into contact with the Indrangheta every day. The juvenile justice system makes them follow a rehabilitation program at the observatory. It aims to shatter the image of the Mafia and its promises of easy money. Qui c'è uno dei luoghi più importanti, ecco, dove vivono la maggior parte dei criminali che si nascondono. To get through to these young people, Vincenzo shows them around a secret room. E più che importante è simbolico. È simbolico perché è rappresentativo di un modo di vivere che spesso viene mitizzato, principalmente quello di cercare di demitizzare, di far capire che non è vero che, insomma, essere un boss, essere un mafioso sia una bella cosa. At the bottom of this little ladder is a small room of 10 square meters with very basic facilities. The Godfather's plans had included a bunker, but he was sent to prison before it was completed. Vincenzo has turned it into a replica of a famous Calabrian hideout. Ecco, questa è una ricostruzione abbastanza fedele. È stato ricostruito così come era il bunker circa di 10-15 anni fa che usava so soprattutto Bellocco di Rosarno, che quando l'hanno trovato aveva questa scritta Dio mio, proteggimi in questo bunker e più o meno aveva Tutte queste immagini di santi, santini, a suo modo che lo proteggevano. Lui era chiamato, aveva anche un'immagine del lupo, lui veniva chiamato il lupo. Che dite ragazzi? Sicuramente uno stile di vita comunque difficoltoso e davvero brutto. Già questo è un modo per, di detenzione, a parere mio, perché... È, È sotto terra, una vita da, da topo. Vincenzo brings up the delicate subject of belonging to the Ndrangheta. Ma 
poi hai, non è che si è, hai perso la, completamente hai perso la libertà non sei più tu non sei più non ti appartieni non appartieni più a te stesso appartiene a un'altra persona la tua libertà la tua, il tuo stile di vita è completamente controllato da un terzo non c'è più la tua persona non esiste proprio più la tua persona sei perché la certo. tua persona è comandata da, d- dal boss ma secondo te allora cos'è che affascina per cui tanti ragazzi avere soldi avere fama avere tutto quello che vuoi, perché comunque per un, ragazzo, per un ragazzo della nostra età avere tutti i soldi, camminare con belle macchine, queste cose qua, cose che in questo, soprattutto in questo periodo, in questa crisi, pochi se le possono permettere, per farsi gli spacconi, per farsi vedere che sono più grandi, questa è la cosa che affascina. Vincenzo fa lavoro preventivo usando gli asset seized from the mafia. Another man has taken over some of them too, to build them up and create jobs. His name is Pino De Massi. Everyone knows him in Italy, because he was the first priest to refuse to officiate at the funeral of a godfather, a punishment more humiliating than prison for these so religious criminals. Torna. These days, Pino de Massi continues to slap them in the face. He has created a cooperative to manage and run the assets seized from the mafia. Allora, i terreni confiscati eh, che gestisce la cooperativa sono tutti terreni confiscati a, a Mamma Santissima eh, dell'Andrangheta. Questi sono tutti nomi pesanti che oggi hanno in mano buona parte dell'economia nazionale. Don Pino has created jobs for dozens of people. In a region with 40% unemployment, the priest wants people to see that it is possible to work legally. In spite of the pressure put on his employees by the Ndrangheta. La gente può dire ma siete pazzi, ma che cosa andate a fare? Però alla fine i risultati sono quelli che contano. La paura è un sentimento. The warnings are not just hot air. The Mafia has already shown that. They have been on Pino de Massi's back since he took over the neighboring olive groves. Don Pino is meeting Domenico, the president of the cooperative. Caro Domenico, molto lieto, piacere, tutto a posto. Abbiamo finito da poco la raccolta. He wants to show us the traces of the reprisals. Subito prima della confisca definitiva, quindi prima dell'assegnazione, sono arrivati su questo terreno attrezzati di, 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 di motoseghe, di camion, di gru per poter portare via degli alberi secolari con questa imponenza, con questa no, stazza, diciamo, alberi alti anche 10-15 metri. Six years ago, in a single night, the Andrangheta cut down these 640 ancient olive trees to leave nothing for Pino de Massi. It's said that the Mafia sold the wood for over 600,000 euros. Three years ago, the Mafia again tried to convince him that this land belonged to them. The sad fate of this olive grove was that hundreds of trees were set on fire. The godfathers of the local clan who organized this destruction were sentenced last year to 16 years in prison. But these long sentences have done nothing to calm Pino de Massi's anger. Ecco, trovarsi in, in un terreno come questo e vedere questa situazione eh, ti fa molto rabbia. Questo, il taglio degli alberi, quindi, non è stato solo frutto di accaparramento di denaro. Uh, ma è anche stato proprio un segno cattivo per dire o noi o nessuno, secondo la loro logica. With thousands of young people out of work and often just drifting through life, the Andrangheta won't be disappearing from the Calabrian landscape anytime soon, unless it finds itself facing a new and powerful enemy. The church could be that enemy. Pope Francis visited Calabria last year. L'andrangheta è questo. Adorazione del male e disprezzo del bene comune. Non sono in comunione con Dio, sono scomunicati. 
Excommunication, the greatest and most shameful of punishments for these criminals who venerate the Virgin Mary and St. Michael, the Archangel.